going to be kind of like um my journey on trying to make friends in New Mexico. So if this is your first time stopping by to say hi, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on my journey. And if you've been here before, hey girl, hey beauty. Thank you for following me on my journey. But like I said, this is video right here is gonna be about my journey on making friends in New Mexico. And just keep in mind, I still don't got no friends. So when I moved out here, I didn't have any kids. I moved out here with my now fiance. I've been back and forth out of New Mexico for probably the last three years, okay? Um, well, the last, it's going on four years. So the first two years I was out here, I got an apartment, I um, got my first like real job, I had my son, all that good stuff. So during that process, I knew a lot of people. I knew people from my job, and then I made some like associates through my job, and I made friends with like their friends and stuff like that. So. I knew a lot of people, but I still didn't feel like anybody was like a friend to me. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have anyone around me that was like, oh my God, let me throw you a baby shower or let me buy your kids gifts or anything like that. I didn't have that. So I still felt like an oddball around a bunch of people. Like, have you ever had that moment where you're around a lot of people, but you still felt alone? That was me. And I couldn't understand why. It was just weird. It was like I was around all these people having a good time, but I still felt like I was alone because it just seemed like they weren't genuine. They were just disingenuine. Like I was just there, just like a pity type situation. Like they was only befriending me for pity. And I don't know if that was me or if that was what was going on, but it definitely felt more like that was what was going on. So in that situation, eventually, you know, I ended up leaving that job and leaving actually leaving out of Albuquerque going back to LA and things didn't really quite work I ended up pregnant again and <laughs> ended up moving back to Albuquerque so in the course of me moving back to Albuquerque that's when I really realized that that group of people that I befriended were not friends like they never checked on me they never messaged me they never called nothing so I was like okay you know it is what it is I learned I've lost so much in my life at this point that losing a person that I had just met is not a big deal. So that's how I took it. I took it and I ran with it, moved on, got another job, befriended people there. But even there, it was kind of fell off. It felt like people only wanted to be befriend me because I was from LA. As weird as that sounds, that's the vibe I got. So I started going to school out here. Um, and I made friends there <laughs> because I am that type of person. I'm a very social person, even though I'm socially awkward. I'm still a very social person, very outgoing person. So people just cling to me. You know what I mean? Like I'm just a natural leader, honey. I'm a Sagittarius. Okay. They love the outgoingness. What you want me to say? Sag, baby. But besides that, it was like I clicked with these people now these people i was kind of talking to i kind of grew a connection with kind of got closer to but even then <laughs> even when i stopped going to school same thing it was just like a group of people and then i just felt like it was just not real like they were just hanging out with me just to do it just so they looked a certain way that makes any sense keep in mind i'm in new mexico okay there's not too many of us melanated beauties out here so it's kind of like i just felt like they just wanted my my juice in the group just to have it but didn't really mess with me like that's that's what i got out here you know that's what i've been getting until it changes this is my aspect of what's going on okay so even now to this day that group of friends i don't talk to them like i have them on all my social media and stuff they don't hit me up they don't check on me nothing nothing you know like um when my dad got sick recently that's when i really realized i don't have any friends i didn't have anyone hitting me up like oh my god is your dad okay nothing 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 let me go with you to the hospital like nothing and there was a couple of people i was really expecting that vibe from that i didn't get and it was really, really, really disappointing. And to this point, like, I will not talk to you. Like, I don't know if they realize it, but they might peep it now. I will not talk to you because at a time where I felt like the people that I expected to reach out to me to make sure I was good or even to attempt 
to make sure I was good did it, that's when I knew, nah, these people that I'm trying to hold on to are not worth me holding on to. And when stuff goes wrong with them, they call me. But when things go wrong with me, you can't check on me. You know what I mean? And I made it a point to kind of post it on Facebook and stuff, you know, what's going on with my dad and that I had to like immediately get out there to see him and stuff like that. I didn't have anybody reach out to me. Like anyone, like nobody. And that's when I realized, hold on y'all. That's really kind of when I realized like, oh wow, you really don't have any friends, sis. Like, you really don't, you know? Not only did I realize it when I was trying to plan my wedding, but I realized it even more because I feel like when you, your parents get sick and you get sick and things like that happen, those people that reach out to you to make sure you're good, those are your friends, you know? Mine is family. Those are your kins, those are your friends. Those are people that care, that genuinely care about you. If somebody can't reach out to you and make sure you're good or your parents are good or your kids are good and stuff like that, or if somebody doesn't hit you up to check on you or check on the fact that you have kids, you know what I mean? Even if they're in a different level in life or they haven't got there yet or whatever it may be, I mean, you still be like, hey, how are you? How are the kids every month? You know, at least I don't get that from anyone. So I probably get it from one person. And I mean, I talk to her all the time. So that doesn't count. But other people that I really expected from, other people that I've known for years that I expected from, I have not gotten. And in 2019, I told myself, phones work two ways. But if I'm the one always reaching out and you never do, then you're the problem. Let me repeat that because I thought that was good. Phones work two ways. But when I'm the only person reaching out, and you never do, you're the problem. You're the problem. I always felt like it was me, but I'm the one that's always reaching out. So if I never reach out and I never hear from you, that just lets me know. You were never there. You were never a real kin. It was never anything you know it's kind of weird because i feel like i'm at a stage in life where i see so many people that know all these people and know all these people and know all these people and i'm kind of like if you ain't family who are you and it's not because i'm keeping myself away from it it's because you i have to eliminate the people that i mean what's the use of having a bunch of friends on social media when nobody likes your stuff Nobody comments on your stuff. Nobody encourages you. What's the use of having all this social media when really you're invisible? And that's what I used to feel in all those groups of friends I had. It was always like, okay, I'm here, but I'm just here to fill in a, a spot. That's how I felt. Like, I'm just here because I'm a unicorn, you know? And it's not good. I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Shit, I'd rather have two whole dollars than four quarters, to be honest with you, because I hate change. So, yeah, I mean, this is my journey. I don't know if it's a midlife crisis. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can have a midlife crisis at 27 if this might be my midlife, like, I don't know. But, yeah, this is where I am in life. This is what it is. This is who I am. This is, this is, what it is you know i'm not going to change me if anything you know i'm a i'm a canvas still being painted um no one's perfect but that doesn't give anyone because i know people might say oh you know nobody's perfect or no one's a mind reader or anything like that but you kind of want to expect at least the bare minimum for people and if they can't even give you the bare minimum of your expectations why didn't your life sis you know but yeah so this has been my journey on uh, you know making kins for trying for my, my life with friendships out in a, in a hole you know what i mean my life with trying to build friendships in a hole it just never has worked and i'm really trying to like get to the bottom of it like is it me is it you is it us but I mean, I need to accept the fact that maybe it's not for me. Maybe having big groups of friends is not for me because honestly, 
there's so much backstabbing I see on a daily basis, which is people in general, that I'm good. I'd rather not be your friend than I had to fight you. I don't care if I'm 27. If I was 50, I would still say the same thing. I'd rather not be your friend than to end up one day fighting you because I've already had these situations and I'm too old. But yes, I mean, I feel like 2019 is a time to just reevaluate yourself, really find your value, really find your worth before you try to bring other people around you. You gotta know who you are. But yeah, this is just a quick little video. I mean, why well, I don't got no friends? It could be me, it could be you, it could be us. I don't know. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If it's your first time stopping by to say hi. If you've been here before, keep it going. Follow me on my journey and I'll see you in the next ones, beauties. Bye.